The minute we saw iPhone 10 kick bezels and home button to the curb, iPad was put on notice. It had a year, maybe more, maybe less, before Apple's new quote unquote modern design language came looking for it. Now, based on all the rumors to date, modern has come, modern has found it, and it has a lot more with it. I am Renee Ritchie. Welcome back to Vector. So awesome that you could join me. Let's run this down. Just this month, we saw Microsoft announce new Surface PCs, part of its ongoing effort to cram Windows down into mobile. Just this week, we saw Google announce the new Pixel Slate, abandoning the ARM and Android platform for Intel chipsets and Chrome OS. It's a fascinatingly similar strategy for two companies that haven't, to date, made a real impact in the tablet market, which, almost a decade later, remains very much an iPad market. That's what Apple is competing with here, a market of its own creation that needs something truly compelling to shock it into upgrading from whatever previous iPad it currently considers good enough. And a new design is a great place to start. Rumors about the 2018 iPads Pro started, well, right after Apple announced the 2017 iPads Pro. But they started in earnest the way most Apple rumors start in earnest these days, with Kuo Ming Chi. Back in October of 2017, he wrote, We predict iOS devices to be equipped with true depth camera in 2018 will include iPhone 10 and 2018 new iPhone and iPad models. Face ID going to iPad really shouldn't take a rumor though, it's how Apple rolls. New technologies get introduced in flashy new devices and then over time as costs go down and supplies go up, they get pushed out across the rest of the product line. We saw it with Retina displays, we saw it with Touch ID, and now it's Face ID's turn. Apple truly, deeply believes Face ID, if not the future of transparent authentication, is the present of translucent authentication, and that's why it's being extended to the next iPad Pro. Unlike iPhone X, which sacrificed flexibility for reliability in debuting the technology by restricting the neural network models and optimizing the camera hardware solely for portrait orientation, iPad gets used far more in landscape mode. And so, will Face ID rotate? Mark Gurman, all casual-like on Twitter this past May. The horizontal Face ID support is for the iPads. In July, though, Mako Takara said, No. Face ID is installed, therefore it is impossible to release the lock with the main unit turned sideways. But Guillermo Rambo retorted just this very week. The 2018 iPad Pro will include Face ID with the same image signal processor as the iPhone XS, iPhone XS Max, and iPhone XR. Further, we can confirm that Face ID on the new iPad Pro will work in both portrait and landscape orientations, though it won't work upside down. Given, like I said, how iPads are used, and that we're over a year into field deployment of the tech at this point, landscape makes all the shades of sense here. True depth, aside from portrait selfies, also means Animoji and Memoji. Steve Trotton Smith found the foundational code for both in the iOS 12 beta back in July. New in iOS 12, Avatar Kit comes to iPad. Still requires a true depth camera to do face tracking though, i.e. an iPad with Face ID. Given that iOS 12 also moved the status bar time away from the center, much like iOS 11 did for the iPhone 10, there was some concern that it was making room for an iPhone 10 style notch on the next iPad Pro as well. Now, if you believe notches maketh the Apple brand, well, first, you haven't seen Watch Series 4, which gets an edge to curved edge display with nary a notch to its name, but second, you need to stop and think of the function behind the form. The notch is a compromise to the current state of technology, which prevents a true depth camera from working if you stick it beneath the display. That means if you really want to go edge to edge, you can't, at least not on top. There, you have to settle for going corner to corner and carefully engineer a cut or notch right along the top. That's acceptable, at least for now, in a phone where you want the biggest screen possible in the smallest casing possible, and you gotta fight for every cubed millimeter you fill. Is a tablet the same, or is it really the opposite? When the display gets bigger, you start to appreciate a little something to hold on to. You switch from needing portability at all costs to enjoying just a little extra comfort. So instead of deleting the bezels, you settle for minimizing them as much as is usefully possible. Glyphs found in the iOS 12 beta back in August seem to bear that out. Guillermo Rambo. One thing notably missing from the glyph is a notch. It seems to confirm that the 2018 iPad model will be without a notch. Now, that still leaves a choice. Do you keep the device the same size and cram the biggest screen you possibly can into it, like iPhone 10, iPhone XS Max, and Apple Watch Series 4? Or do you keep the screen size the same and remove as much bezel as possible to make them even more portable? Or do you optimize for portability on the bigger model and screen size on the smaller? 
That last one is what some of the rumors have been suggesting, keeping the 12.9 at 12.9, but taking the 10.5 to 11. Chen Yuxiang, back in April, translated by Google. It's reported that this year, Apple is expected to launch a new iPad Pro of about 11 inches. Mark Gurman in September, they'll come in 11 inch and 12.9 inch sizes. And yeah, both Gurman and Chen were effectively ruling out OLED, which is still expensive and supply constrained. Whether or not the new iPads Pro use the new liquid retina LCD of the new iPhone XR, we'll have to wait and see. Apple introduced Lightning years before the consortium could get their stuff together and agree on USB-C, and it remains a thinner and more adaptable, for Apple at least, interconnect to this day. Now, Apple's Lightning team was also a driving force behind USB-C, which is why there are similarities in approach, if not identicality, and that is to a word, in results, and why Apple was so quick and complete about moving to it for the 12-inch MacBook and the new MacBook Pro. iPhone might well go completely wireless before it goes USB-C. We'll have to wait and see on that too. But iPad Pro is rumored to be making the switch this year. Kuo Ming-Chi, back in September. In addition to Face ID support, we expect the new iPad Pro model's main upgrade to include replacing Lightning with a USB-C interface and bundling with a new unibody design 18-watt power adapter, which cancels the removable plug design. Alas, not one on each side like the MacBook Pro or Pixel Slate. Dongles aside, it would effectively leave the Apple-centric Lightning ecosystem behind for the more broad-based peripheral market. It's important to point out though that while USB-C and Thunderbolt 3 share a plug, they do not share a bus. So put that ultra high speed RAID array away, but maybe not that 4K display. Guillermo Rambo, last week. With its USB-C port, the 2018 iPad Pro will be able to output 4K HDR video to external displays. Of course, many will be salivating at the chance to use an iPad Pro itself as an external as in secondary display for when they're back at their Mac. The biggest mystery in the 2018 iPad Pro rumors has been a new connector located on the bottom back, like where the home button would sit in the mirror universe. Remember that Mako Takara rumor I mentioned from July? Or when the position of the smart connector, previously located on the side, has been moved to the lower rear side, close to the lightning connector. For this reason, the next iPad Pro smart keyboard may be changed to vertical position specifications. Now the Mako also said Apple would be deleting the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack from iPad Pro this go around, which would suck not for headphones, but for audio professionals who still connect all kinds of gear that way. But Google just killed it off on the Pixel Slate and with this outstanding rationale. Courage, the courage to move on, do something new that betters all of us. One of the trends that we're really seeing is the advent of many more Bluetooth accessories, mm -hmm. particularly for audio. So it's likely not long for anyone's earth. Dave Hemestoffa quickly showed off what the new connector might look like. Just got my hands on a purported 2018 iPad Pro CAD showing an unknown thing located on the back of the tablet. Not Touch ID on the back as some immediately hoped. Apple really did burn the ship when they landed on Face ID Island, but instead an evolution of the original smart connector that launched back with the original iPad Pro. Now, would it be an addition or a replacement to the existing smart connector? Rumors have been mixed. That part about the smart keyboard moving to a vertical orientation, like the very first iPad keyboard dock, is almost as horrifying to read as it is to envision, though. But for other accessories? Steve Trotton-Smith and Mark Gurman, back in September. The crayon doesn't need pairing, so I expect the second-gen pencil to work the same way. That just leaves charging, which could be what the new 3-pin connector on the back of the iPad is for. Speaking of which, after a decade of using Wacom, Apple Pencil right out of the gate was the best, most visceral, physical made digital drawing tool I've ever experienced. But of course, that only raised the expectations for a sequel. The Logitech Crayon announced alongside the 2018 entry-level iPad added instant pairing to the mix, something that'd be very much appreciated on the pencil proper. Given that the personal and professional environments are different than education though, Apple could use a different system as well. Guillermo Rambo again, last week. The new Apple Pencil will be paired with the iPad Pro by proximity, much like AirPods or HomePod. Switching between devices will be possible without connecting the Apple Pencil to the charging port. No word on interchangeable tips, sorry R2, or erasers on the back, or gold color options. Or, not surprisingly, my biggest request, that Apple call it the number two pencil. Yeah, I know, I'll get it. 
Aside from the portrait rumor I vomited earlier, which, please, no, still no, not much else has been bandied about concerning the next generation smart keyboard. There is a frequent wish list item that's still worth sharing, though. A capacitive area or key that mimics the effects of the software trackpad mode in hardware so that when your hands are on the keyboard, they can stay on the keyboard and not have to reach up and across to the display to get their tap and swipe on. And yes, I realize the same people who have a trackpad on a Mac but still want a touchscreen have a touchscreen on iPad Pro and still want a trackpad, because of course they do. Contact switching for humans is a lossy transaction, so the more you can do in the state that you're already in, the better. Okay, so now, some of the most frequent questions I've been getting. When will the new iPad Pro be released? Apple hasn't stuck to a yearly schedule for iPads in pretty much forever, much less the Pros, so it could be any time. The next best window, though, is still this fall. Now, Apple could drop it in a press release or invite people over for briefings like it's done with the red iPhone for the last couple of years. But when there's a new design, I really like to hear Apple tell the story of that new design, like it did for iPhone 10 and Apple Watch Series 4. So, fingers crossed, my hope is an October event. I already did a full video breakdown on that, so I'll link to it in the description below. What will the new iPad Pro be called? iPad Pro Roman numeral 10 looks all shades of cool to me, but it's not the 10th iPad Pro or the 10th anniversary of the iPad. That'd be 2020. Apple can call it anything it wants though. iPad Pro 3, iPad Pro Edition, iPad Pro Edge, iPad Pro Max, iPad Pro that Fortnite floss, whatever. Even simply iPad Pro bracket 2018 bracket. Will it have water resistance? No rumors of water resistance yet, though sealing and gasketing as much as possible to prevent as many splash and spill related problems as possible would be great for everybody. How about 3D touch? Even iPhone XR doesn't have 3D touch, but the displays on iPads are probably still too big to support 3D touch as currently implemented in LCD iPhones, which rely on the deformation as measured by the LED backlight. Apple A12 Bionic, A12, A12 10, I mean A12X, as we saw from Anantech, A12 Bionic is already chomping at the heels of Intel's desktop Skylake architecture and using a more advanced, more efficient process to boot. So this is something I am very much looking forward to seeing in the iPad Pro. It will, I expect, make all the Core M laptops and convertibles by Microsoft, Google, and yes, looking at you 12-inch MacBook, weep for its silicon. What about wireless charging? No rumors of that yet either, and probably not something that's really efficient enough at iPad scale to make sense yet. Please, iPad Pro Mini, please. Yeah, sorry, so sorry. May I show you something in an iPhone XS Max? What about a dual camera system on the back? I mean, I would love an iPhone XS style camera on the back. With a viewfinder as big as iPad Pro, you essentially have a 4K mobile studio rig in your hands. But what I'm expecting is more in line with the iPhone XR, a terrific wide angle that uses the new eight core neural engine into the ISP to produce smart HDR and computational portrait mode. And if that sounds fascinating to you, make sure you check out Brilliant. Whenever I get asked about logic, algorithms, machine learning, and artificial intelligence, and the more advanced topics that frankly are becoming the more frequent topics I talk about in these videos, I try to explain them, but Brilliant can actually teach them to you. Each of the courses starts off kind of easy and fun and then gets more and more challenging as you master the concepts. Check them out at brilliant.org vector and get smarter. I mean, get started. I mean, get smarter and started today. Both. Thanks, Brilliant, and thank you for supporting the sponsors who support this show. So, Come the end of October, will Tim Cook once again take the stage, announce a new iPad Pro, show us a teaser video, and then hand off to Phil Schiller or Greg Joswiak for the full demo? And if so, what should be in that full demo? What are the new iPad Pro features you really want to see? What are the features you absolutely do not want to see? Hit like, hit subscribe, and then hit up the comments below and let me know. And thank you so much for watching.